Hello Trinity Tigers and welcome to Learning Together. The live webinar, webinar series is part of the lifelong learning initiatives presented by Trinity's Office of Alumni Relations. I'm James Hill from the class of 1976 and also the very proud voice of the Trinity Tigers. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's webinar speaker, Butch Newman, a 1965 Trinity graduate and also the director of tennis, of men's and women's tennis here at Trinity. Butch is a two-time All-American and longtime men's and women's coach, and he is a certified Tiger legend. He was elected to the 2005 Trinity University Athletic Hall of Fame. He's also a member of the Texas Tennis Hall of Fame. Now, Coach Newman assumed his new role in July 2009 after a long and distinguished coaching career. His responsibilities include the development of on-campus tennis facilities and recruiting academically qualified and athletically talented student athletes. Coach Newman also continues a strong relationship with former tennis student athletes for both the NCAA Division I and Division III eras. And we are also pleased to have with us Coach Russell McMines from the class of 2002, the current head men's tennis coach at Trinity, an outstanding coach in his own right. He will engage our webinar speaker in conversations on Trinity men's tennis history. And please note that you will be able to submit your questions as you listen to the conversation and Coach Newman promised me he will be happy to answer them. Without further ado and fanfare, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Russell McMines. Thank you, James. Uh, it is definitely an honor for me to not only be part of this webinar with Coach Newman, um, but more importantly to be part of this storied history that is Trinity men's tennis. Uh, I've looked up to Coach Newman uh, for the last 20 years as I transitioned from player then to assistant coach and now to the current head coach. Uh, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to discuss the history of this incredible program with you today, Coach. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, it's going to be exciting for everyone. As I know, me personally, these stories never get old. Uh, but why don't we start from the beginning? Tell us how it all began. It all began with the vision of one man, Clarence Mabry. Uh, who I was fortunate enough to have as my coach. He, my first day on the tennis court, he kicked me off. But uh, <laughs> I came back the next day and with some spunk, and he saw something in me. But uh, we established a relationship that uh, lasted a lifetime. But he had a vision to start a tennis program here at Trinity, a serious tennis program, being established in 1869 through 1956 when his vision and implementation became. They had tennis teams, uh, but he had the vision to start a serious tennis team in 1956. And Trinity had no tennis courts. They had no tennis team, uh, but he had a vision and he got their permission. So they started the team down at San Pedro Park, then now McFarland Tennis Center, and he recruited three of his four scholarship players were sons of city bus drivers, San Antonio Transit Company. Jim Moses, John Newman, my brother, Bob Moody, and uh, thus began the tennis program. It uh, obviously, it evolved from there, but one thing that first team did before they graduated, in fact, their junior year, they is, got the first national recognition that Trinity had ever had as their tennis program because my brother and Jimmy Moses got to the quarterfinals of the NCAA championship, had match point on the team that won it. But that was a, a very uh, great accomplishment that put Trinity in a little bit of national limelight. So, But I would have to say that it was Clarence. He, uh, he loved tennis, he was a visionary, and uh, to start a program at a place where they had no program, they had no courts, they had no team, uh, to the, where he ended up is just absolutely amazing. And if you could uh, kind of expound on that, I know that vision, I mean, he kind of hit the ground running here and really changed San Antonio tennis, Trinity tennis as it was, but uh, how did that lead to arguably the greatest collegiate team ever assembled? Uh, well, it really <laughs> began to hit the ground running when he recruited a player called Chuck McKinley. Uh, now, I've been asked the question, how in the world did he recruit a player like Chuck, a national junior champion, to come to 
a little school down in Texas. Uh, there's a lot of little things that uh, played a part. Uh, Rod Sussman had transferred from the University of Houston, and he uh, was from St. Louis, where Chuck was from. But I, w I would say the main reason uh, he was able to recruit Chuck is because he was a, a PR person. He could sell something. He had this vision, and he wanted a serious tennis program. And I th he sold Chuck on the, f the fact that he could lead this this school into really national prominence. And Chuck came, and wow, Chuck came. He was here in '59 to '63. He wins Wimbledon. One year he's here. He attracts. He's the number one player in the world, number one in the United States. He attracts Frank Froling, who's number two in the United States, number five in the world. Cliff Buckles and myself, Miles Cortez. I think Ken Smith was even a part of that group. But uh, he, he just attracted, and from there, yes, it was off and running. Uh, when you have a player on your team that wins Wimbledon, uh, and it's nationally or worldwide televised, and they mentioned, they didn't even get it right, it was a university then, but they kept mentioning Trinity College, where Chuck was <laughs> from. Uh, but people learned that it was a university. It became a worldwide tennis institution at that time. And that's not what really Trinity was really all about. It was also, <laughs> also, <laughs> an outstanding liberal <laughs> arts education that was striving for excellence. But uh, it uh, became synonymous with uh, Trinity and tennis due to Chuck. And uh, so he hit the ground running and continued the ball rolling for 18 years. He had players that wanted to be a part of a great tennis program, which it obviously was. So. Yeah, Clarence was the visionary, but he had something besides vision. He had a heart for all of his players. He really uh, was concerned about their development as people. And so we spent as much time with Clarence off the court as we did on the court, over at his house, in his car, I mean, just sitting, talking, because you knew he wanted what was best for you. If you had a personal problem, you call Clarence. He is always available. But uh, he was what I would call the richest man I ever knew because of those relationships that he established and earned because of his genuine concern for his players. So I had a great role model uh, to have is my first coach. He kicked me off the court. I came back the next day storming, but wow, little did I know that uh, he would be the most influential man in my life, uh, bar none. So Clarence started the program, kept it rolling, and uh, the rest is history. Well, and I mean, a little foreshadowing of perhaps why you're sitting in this chair with us today. <laughs> I think a lot of same similar sentiments among your players. But uh, you know, as this, this team was rolling through the 60s and establishing some dominance and uh, a solid reputation, um, could you talk a little bit about how you know, in the 70s when the collegiate success started to roll around? Well, you know, it, uh, yeah, it rolled from the great teams of the 60s that never participated as a team in the NCAAs because players of that renown, they wanted to go for the titles such as Wimbledon, I mean. And uh, in fact, Chuck had to get permission, Clarence had to get it for him from Dr. Laurie to go play at Wimbledon, which was a great decision. But uh, so it continued through the 70s, and wow, what, what teams they had. They'd finished second, they'd finished third, fourth. But uh, in 1972, wow, the, the t NCAA national team champion, Trinity University, led by Dick Stockton, he had Bob McKinley, Brian Gottfried, Paul Gherkin. Uh, they win the national team championships at NCAA in Athens, Georgia, by the largest margin that has ever been scored. Uh, the scoring was different in those days. They did it by individual performance. It's not like the dual format that they have now. So, uh, but now it's dual match, and uh, but 
up to that point in time, it was shortly afterwards, they did switch to dual match. They, they just uh, had a phenomenal uh, tournament, and it continued to roll. Clarence, I think uh, he started 56. He turned the reins over to Bobby McKinley in 74. Uh, Bobby coached for 10 years, and he was right on the cusp of winning national championships, and he had some great players. Uh, and in fact, uh, what one of them, I mean, Brian's little brother, uh, Larry Gottfried, had a win over some guy most everybody's heard of. He's still one of the most colorful color analysts on, on TV, John McEnroe, who uh, played college tennis very shortly, but he has suffered his <laughs> a loss to Larry walking off the court. I still recall that picture we have down in the Mabry Pavilion and you see John McEnroe. We have a big 24 by 36 picture down there. You can see clearly John McEnroe hanging his head in the background <laughs> with his famous headband still on. And Larry walking off the court with a big proud number one. And he had just taken out John, seven, <laughs> five, seven, six. So the, the uh, program continued to just, uh, just go great guns in the 70s. And, uh, and in the 80s, and, and uh, so anyway, where was I? No, that's, not, <laughs> that's one of my favorite stories to tell. And I know, you know, in the 80s, you know, you, you came back into the, the program as well. And, uh, you know, if you could talk a little bit, um, you know, we've talked about all these highlights in the history of the program, but at this time is when Trinity University and the program faced its uh, perhaps most controversial and challenging decision. Um, could you tell us how the transition from Division I to Division Three came about? Yes, and before I do that, let me just say this, this webinar we're doing today is just focusing on men's tennis. Right. We, we have, you know, some outstanding women's uh, national championships. In fact, uh, our current women's coach, Gretchen Rush, is who's going to do a webinar on the women's aspect of tennis. She and Louise Allen won a national championship at the NCAAs. But, Emily uh, Burr Foster, too, uh, uh, USTA national champion. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had some great women in our program, so... I just want to make sure, sure everybody knows that I'm not forgetting them. We have a special program just for that part of the, uh, the program. But, wow, the transition, 1990 fall, we were D1, and Trinity had already begun transitioning in all their sports from D1 to D3. In fact, tennis was the very last sport to trans make that transition. Uh, Trinity's always been about ac academic excellence, and uh, Dr. Calgard saw, I think, you know, into the future what really would be best for the university and best for all the student athletes. When he and the board made the decision to go and align the whole school philosophically and with the NCAA Division III, but it, uh, I wasn't here during the Vietnam protest because I was in the Marine Corps actually in Vietnam. But I understand those protests were really energetic and they've been compared to nothing like that till 1990 decision came. And I witnessed we, some of that myself, by the oh, way. <laughs> we had uproar. People trying to get to Cal Guard as they went in for the press interview. And uh, it, was, it was wild. It was chaotic. And uh, Calgard took a lot of heat. I mean, some people thought that we had even dropped the tennis program. We didn't drop the program. We were just transitioning to a new chapter. And, uh, but the players didn't like it. The players wanted to be the ones that brought this all the way back up to the top to win another NCAA championship. And those players, we had them sleeping on the court for weeks afterwards in protest until it finally became apparent that, hey, the decision was not going to be reversed. It was there. It was tough. And uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't easy for me because uh, I had come back to try to revive this thing and bring it all the way back to the top. Uh, and, uh, and, and when they went from D... One to D3, I had some offers to go to, to a well-known D1 universities. And, uh, but my heart, everything that I've gotten out of value 
uh, at Trinity uh, from t was right here. So, in, in fact, uh, I mean, I talked about Coach and Mabry, and one of the things that really meant so much to me in my development that I tried to pass on while I was coaching and used in my D3 experiences, my fortune 23 years to do that, was the acronym SAT. In 1961, when I had my first meeting with the rest of the team that came in that, that fall, we sit down in the little office there at the Varsity Stadium, now the Al G. Hill Junior Tennis Stadium, and Clarence introduces the acronym S-A-T. And I didn't know what that was for. Sat. I was, I was setting in there, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but he explained it very, very clearly. The S is for spiritual. He says, I want you to look at these things, and these are priorities that you should base your life on and try to implement. He says, if you put spiritual at the top, these are the values that you make choices and decisions by. He said, and then number two, you realize you're here to get an education at this outstanding institution. He says, when I get you on the court for the T part, I can get the maximum out of your potential. Hmm. So... I bought into that and so much so that it uh, had a huge impact on my life. I, I realized that uh, he was right on and I was thankful for that acronym and continued to use it all through my Division Three coaching years. But uh, the transition, yeah, it, the decision was made in fall of 90. We became eligible for 1993 NCAA. And uh, we didn't necessarily hit the ground running <laughs> uh, for that. I was recruiting <laughs> out of <laughs> my intermediate tennis class to get a roster of six <laughs> in women's tennis. But also I remember my very first Division Three women's recruit, Chrissy Supak Miller from Georgetown. And she and Jenny Brazier went on to become All-Americans two, three, maybe all four years. Uh, they were... They were very fruitful years uh, because even though Trinity's won a lot of national championships, I always considered that every year was successful if we were growing in the acronym SAT and having great experiences and things that we could learn by and grow by. But uh, we, uh, after the decision and after the transition, it was... 1997, we had climbed back, we're climbing back, we won our first D3 national championship. In fact, a guy named Michael Taz Slutsky <laughs> and Jamie Broach on a Friday afternoon over in Tennessee won the ITA national uh, men's doubles championship. And the next morning, Jamie Broach wins the national singles championship. They were coming in pairs, they were coming in twos. That wasn't uh, the following year. We had Lola Taylor and Lizzie Yasser uh, win a national doubles and Lola won the national singles. The following year, we had Lizzie Yasser and Amanda Brown. Lizzie wins the national singles, she wins the doubles with, with Amanda. It was, in fact, Lizzie, wow. She was the best women's player I've ever recruited. She won like five national championships while she's here. You get one of those, Russ, and you're <laughs> off to the races. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we, we climbed back up, and the culmination, it seemed like, uh, well, let's see, I, I don't want to forget the Corpus Christi twosome. We had Stefan Parker, Sean Fifield win the national men's doubles, and Haley Didis Doria and Heather uh, McGowan Anderson win the national women's singles. And uh, that was a, memori a memorable match because they were getting cream. I mean, they were just so nervous playing in the finals. Their parents were down there. They had a good crowd. And I think they lose the first set six love. And I go out there and I don't know what to say to them. I, but I did say something like this. You know, you girls are just stinking up the <laughs> You are embarrassing the whole Trinity tennis program. So loosen up. You can't do any worse, you know, and just go for it. 
they uh. turned around, won the next set, and win a tight third set tiebreaker and win the national championship. And that was so memorial, memorable because of my comments that I remember. <laughs> but it woke them up. They got loose, you know, and you've got to be loose. Right. So, uh, but uh, the culmination, I think, of all my D3 days was wow. And you were a member of that team in 2000 when we unbelievably, within 30 minutes apart, win the national NCAA team championships. The men win it in Kalamazoo. Keith is up there coaching. and Keith Mackay. Keith Mackay and Ryan and I are over in uh, St. Peter, Minnesota. Ryan Tikal, and yeah. uh, <laughs> the women have to come back from a 4-1 deficit. Uh, wow. And uh, when we won that match, uh, it, was, it was like a dream. I mean, I couldn't believe, you know, Ryan and I had gone to church that morning at a place called Trinity Church. <laughs> well, I kept the pin, and we were thinking, ooh, is that an omen? <laughs> so, uh, and we, <laughs> that afternoon, we have two national championships, and I'm saying, <laughs> thank you, Lord, <laughs> for a great, great day. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we went on, and, uh, you know, my candle was burning low, and, uh, you know, Russ, I told the key to establishing this whole program was, was the Coach Mabry, and, and I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time to, to continue trying to follow in his footsteps, fulfilling his SAT acronym and developing young people to prepare them for the next life. But uh, Trinity is very, very fortunate to have you at the helm because uh, absolutely we feel like you have bought into that. You lived it. You experienced it. And you have a heart to develop young people. And uh, it's the coaches are really, you know, they can have the most profound impact on the students because they've got them out there for four years and practices and matches and traveling. And they do have a little hiccup that you have to kind of get them through, and you've had your share of those. But... Uh, we're very fortunate to have you at the men's helm to keep this going, Russ. Uh, so thank you for, for your commitment to keep it rolling. Well, I appreciate that. I had tremendous mentors with both you and, and Keith McKay, who was my personal coach and then the assistant while I was here and ultimately uh, turned over his position to me. Um, but to get back a little bit more to you, because I know you're a pretty hum humble individual, as anybody that's experienced it, um, in my opinion, the uh, the success of the, the transition ultimately from Division One to Division Three, um, and our ability for our program to be where it is today, was made possible by you staying at the helm throughout that transition. Uh, somebody you know with tremendous credibility to the program from his playing days as a coach, uh, and just allowed us to embark on the Division Three era with some gusto, you know, with some notoriety. Um, if you could kind of just describe you, how you see the evolution uh, of our student athletes, um, how you know we're never going to be able to replicate uh, the on-court success that you had back in the '60s and the '70s, um, or went over McEnroe. But uh, you know we're hopefully succeeding and carrying the torch off the court uh, to a high standard. So if you could kind of go well, into that a little bit. Well, believe it or not, there's always been a much higher priority than our on court successes, and that's the development, the instilling of the values that you are learning to live by and make choices by. And this is where I think the Division Three aspect of my last 23 years that I coached was really fruitful and enjoyable because the athletes bought into that acronym, and, and now you're developing people. There wasn't a year that went by in all those 23. Oh, we had some tough years title-wise, but there wasn't a year that went by that I did not think it was a very successful year because relationships were being made, uh, lessons were being learned, the kids were growing, and, and I wanted to make sure they grew and they took out great memories, and, and that was happening. <clears throat> uh, you know, one of the things that my first five years here, I coached the men only, but I got the opportunity five years later to have the women's program also. And I, at first, I had two sides to that. Wow, double, double everything. But it was an opportunity to, for the team to have double the support too, right. and double the experiences. We we traveled together. 
We went on tubing trips together. We did all kinds of things together, the study together. And when matches were there, they had a, just not only their team, the other team supporting each other. And relationships, which is always what I thought made Clarence the richest man I ever known, ever knew, uh, were being cultivated. I mean, I didn't ever think and intend this to happen, but we had some long-term, lifetime commitment relationships. My own son found one of the very sweetest ladies I've ever had on my team, Lynn Newman, mm -hmm. and married her. Wow. And she's what, a Trinity employee, She too, is, yes. and what a daughter-in-law. <laughs> uh, but we had Jeevan Ramakrishna and Suzanne Singleton marry. He's a doctor. We had Lola Taylor, Andrew Honeybone, they're, they're married. And I mean, the relationships, the solid core values they took out of it, I mean, it was really something that was special for me to see how that SAT worked not only for me, but it's working for others. And I always just have to go back to, to Clarence in that first meeting, because I remember writing it up on that board. But uh, it works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, I know we have a couple, one of my teammates, uh, Jeff Mueller, who is, you know, he, he has uh, paved his own way quite impressively as well. Ooh, Could I, you share some about Jeff? Well, yeah, and not just Jeff, but it, we are, I love that guy. Uh, I re remember recruiting him, <laughs> McFarlane, and he had a good serve and a good forehand, and Oh, what a back end. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and we recruited Jeff, and he came in, and uh, one of the hardest workers, spirited persons I've ever had. But uh, Jeff led our team to semifinal finish uh, in 1999 in California. And we were really, really close on the line. He's playing number one. But what, what was so admirable, he had a wrist problem, he had a surgery, he came back his senior year and he's trying to main, get, get to where he was again. He's playing number six and he's team captain, but he led in a position that would have been tough for anybody to accept, a team of really good players, the Sloan Rush, the Sluskies, the Ramakrishnans, uh, Ryan Scott, uh, the Kenya boy, uh, what's his name? Joseph. Joseph De Sanjo. De Sanjo. Yes. I mean, Jeff unified that team through his leadership, and he's still one of the brightest <laughs> leaders in the world that I know because he, he ended up going into the Marine Corps, flying an A-4, running strafing missions in Iraq, uh, gets a Pat Tillman Award, uh, doing great, married a Trinity, soccer player, Mo, and, and uh, but we have uh, somebody else from Trinity. We Dabney Langhorn Lang Friedrich, Friedrich. Yep. judge up in D.C. area. I mean, Outstanding women's player, absolutely. Definitely. U.S. I mean, District Judge now. So. But what our players are able to do when they go out with their degree and with the values and lessons they've learned in the aspect of some of the things they learn in tennis is how important the serve is. And they take that serve mentality, because I've always thought that serve is the most important shot in the game. It starts it off, the stronger you serve, the better your chances of winning, and in life, it's the same way. But our students, they go out with a heart and willing and a desire and an understanding of serving wherever they can, their family, their job, their community, their country, their state, whatever. But that's that's mm -hmm. really gratifying to see how these student athletes that have gone on in Division Three, and I can follow them much closer than the ones that we had in Division One, who were a lot of foreigners that I'd never unfortunately get to see again. Right. And we had some really good ones. But uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm really proud of uh, what uh, our students are prepared for and uh, what that acronym has, you know, enabled me to impart to them and, and from my coach and the lessons that I learned through his genuine concern about others. That's awesome. 
and you know we're obviously hoping to continue that standard you guys set. We are you know attempting to have some encore success for you as well to keep that tradition of excellence going. Um, but uh, you know we're just thrilled to be part of the program. That's for sure. Um, we would, unless you have some extra stories you'd like to share, or James, if you have any uh, questions or stories you'd like to share. Well, um, well I, I, up. I just wanted to say that I have, have been part of the Division One and Division Three eras as an announcer and writer, sports information as well, as Justin Parker and Bree Davis, my colleagues. But I am proud of both eras. I mean, they are, they are some outstanding people, not just players from the Division One and Division Three eras. And uh, no one is prouder of, of <coughs> Trinity Tennis than I am, except maybe for you and Butch, but that's <laughs> the only one. Just wanted to add that, though. Okay. Well, thank you, James. I think we're getting, we're getting some hits Yeah, we, uh, we're going to open it up here. I'd like to read some comments first. Uh, one of my good friends and doubles partners while I was at Trinity, Michael Slutsky, did chime in. He said, uh, just like you, Coach, you were a great inspiration and truly cared for your players. And All I think right. uh, that was a sentiment shared by uh, just about everybody you had the, yeah. the, had the privilege to play for you through your time. Um, let's see. Let me, may I tell a little story in response to Michael Slesky? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Taz, I, right? Yeah. Taz, I remember I was sitting at the table one night at home having dinner. And as you know, sometimes, you know, it's a 24-7 deal. But I get a call from this kid, and I've gotten some, some maybe a letter or two from him. But he's interested in coming to Trinity. And one of the reasons was he was waitlisted at Emory. Man. And so, man, I looked him up real quick, saw how talented he was, got on him like a flea on a dog, <laughs> and talked him into coming to Trinity. And it just so happened his freshman year in the finals of the ITA up in Sewanee, Tennessee, in the finals, he's playing a kid from Emory. I have never seen a more determined kid. <laughs> any time we ever played Emory or anybody had anything to do with Emory, Taz was super motivated. Absolutely. And he ends up winning that match as freshman and, and All-American. And uh, yeah, Taz, I'm glad you uh, were waitlisted over at Emory. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to, and he's obviously listening to us here. He says, uh, you were to us what Clarence was to you. So thank oh. you, it can never be repaid. Very nice. Okay, we do. Uh, we do have some, a few questions here. Um, where do we send checks to better support the program financially? Oh, a, I love oh. it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Trinity University, you can send them actually, Butch Newman, Trinity University, <laughs> but label down the corner tennis uh, program. And uh, we will make certain if you want them to be used for tennis, we'll use them for tennis. Uh, and we, our coaches, always have ideas where we can spend money. <laughs> More ideas than money, so, uh, but s send them to, and care of me at Trinity University, One Trinity Place, San Antonio, 78212. Thank you for that. Absolutely, yes, Absolutely. thank you for that one. Um, can the coach talk about the prospects for this year? Well, you know what, coach? I think you ought to be the one to, but I will say, you got a pretty doggone good player coming in that's and one coming back, the national champion coming we back. We do, yeah. I mean, this year should uh, should have a, a very different look from last year. Last year we had a few roadblocks and uh, some struggles along the way. But as far as incoming players, and we were we were fortunate to get a very talented transfer out of Redlands. Um, he's going to be an uh, incoming sophomore, so he'll join our already very strong sophomore class. Uh, his name's Cameron Krimble out of Arizona. Uh, we're super excited to have him. Uh, join the program. I mean, he's a decorated junior player and had great success last year at Redlands um, and should really, really make us a deep program. Uh, we're also, as Coach alluded to, uh, returning Matt Tyre. Uh, he had an injury last year that forced him uh, to take a red shirt last year. He's at, we're fortunate that he uh, is in our fifth year uh, um, program here at Trinity. Um, so he's got another year of eligibility uh, coming back to us. We also brought in um, a kid Ironic, he's the son of uh, one of my good friends, but also uh, competitors, uh, Paul Settles out at Claremont. Uh, his son, Christian Settles, is coming in as a, a freshman this year for us. Um, and then uh, a, a Texas boy, Archer Zygman, um, out of the Houston area, played for Memorial, uh, won state doubles, and they won as a team uh, this year as well. Um, that's just to name a few. Uh, we've got some open tryouts that we're going to run as well. Um, and so uh, we're looking forward to this year for sure. It should be a, a, a nice turnaround year for us. 
I see. Is that Jack Shull at the top? It is. Jack he, Shull is a former baseball All-American, a member of our Athletic Hall of Fame. I yes. can't read the question, though. Okay, Russell, I, young eyes. I'll Go take ahead. it. Uh, <laughs> which Trinity men's tennis player had the best success on the Pro Tour? Ooh. On the Pro Tour? Wow, that, that's a good one. Unfortunately, when Chuck won Wimbledon and was number one in the world, it was still amateur tennis. Chuck got a grand total of $18 a day for every day he was in Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. And unlike, what did they get, $3 million this year or something for, yeah, for winning crazy. the thing? Uh, but the most successful on the Pro Tour, Dickie Stockton, Brian Gottfried, I'd yeah. say have to, to rate right up there. Dickie beat Connors in the finals of the U.S. Pro Indoor one year. Brian wins Wimbledon doubles with Raul Ramirez, but those two guys were top ten yeah. players for like almost ten years in a row. Wow. So, yeah. uh, I'd have to say they were our two most successful men's uh, pro players. Right. Awesome. Um, Mueller has joined us. He Jeff says uh, <laughs> the second to Slutsy's comment was actually from him. He said, thank you, Coach, and Keith, for rocking Russ. I appreciate okay. that, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff is a great teammate. Um, you know, he definitely took me under his wing uh, to, to try to get the most out of me while I was here as a player, and I will be ever forever grateful. Even uh, was his assistant when we were running uh, NCAA events after I graduated. So, uh, you know, definitely a lot of love for Jeff. Jeff, just uh, and one a little more. No, no, no. Uh, no hard feelings about that back end you came in with because <laughs> I, I, I saw it totally mature and with you hitting great slice approach shots in that match out at Claremont that you won against this Russian that enabled you to become all American. Uh, so uh, hey, you uh, you're one of the ones I'm really proud of. Uh, only decision I uh, have about you is that you didn't have more years to, to play for me. <laughs> Um, and he, he's following up with that. He said, it was terrible. Who are we kidding? Lucky to even be on the floor with the great players on our team. And that's a uh, typical Jeff humor on that one. Um, Virginia Frazier Barber is uh, commenting here. She says, uh, what would Coach Newman say is the key to team success? Verge, golly, I'll tell you what. One of the keys that uh, obvious when you and Lee P were team captains is leadership. You and Lee P were fantastic captains and helped me take the lead and take the concern and, and shoulder everything. But you all, I, leadership is an unselfish thing that you have to, I think, have and uh, where you put others before yourself. And, uh, but I think you well know the answer that uh, how you and Lee P did that. And, and if I uh, was a help to model that, then I, I'm appreciative, but uh, I and sure. And for the, for the listeners and uh, viewers, who, who is Lee P? Lee Pankanine, Lee very Pankanine. good, okay. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, so best wishes to you, Verge. Hope your mom and dad are doing well. Do we have another comment at the bottom on the right there? Is that's uh, the same, that's same. Verge's comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we're still accepting questions or comments if you have any that you'd like to add. Has uh, any of this triggered any stories or, or thoughts in, in your coaching career or playing career that, you know, stories that you might want to still share? Well, I might, you know, I alluded to the fact that uh, the best women's player I ever had was Lizzie Yasser. The best D3 men's player I ever had was a guy named Sloan Rush. Awesome. And <laughs> yes, Sloan was, I can think of a few th stories about him because he was the leader of the team uh, in 2000 quiet leader. I mean, we had some much more vocal. I, I don't know if he was even a captain, but he played number one and he was a fantastic player. But the way Sloan would prepare for a big tournament or a big match is he'd take a couple of days off, rest his big arm. He had an unbelievable serve. And uh, <laughs> unlike anything that I ever experienced, he would, he just needed a rest. And so uh, that, w that was kind of unique. But uh, there is one other thing about Sloan, uh, being that the guy was only here three years. years That's the only bad thing that I can think about him. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, uh, he was too bright. He, he got out of here in three years and went to med school and is now a doctor up in the, the panhandle somewhere. But uh, oh. 
Dick Stockton. Oh, Ooh. here we go. Uh -oh. Dick Stockton chiming in. Hi, guys. Enjoying this webinar. Thanks for making this work today. Go Tigers. All right. <laughs> hey. Dick Stockton. Hey. He, you know, he does a lot with his uh, organization, uh, uh, giving tennis lessons and, and tournaments for the military. Uh, boot, yeah, boots on the right. court. Boot. You participate. Your whole team has, haven't you? Right. The past few years, uh, we've been fortunate to join forces with him no pun intended, but uh, and, yeah. and go out to the military bases, and it's been a very eye-opening experience and a rewarding experience for our players. For and the sure. men and women have done that. Absolutely, too, with Dick. absolutely. Hey, Blockton, I wore my T3 T-shirt that you gave me here for helping <laughs> out in those clinics last week. So, thinking of you, and, and speaking of giving back to the community, that's uh, that's, yeah. that's a valuable service that he provides for our military, and uh, we appreciate you, Blockton. Absolutely. Um, one of our current player parents, uh, Lisa Tyre, says, as a Trinity tennis parent, I would like to express how pleased I am to have my son be a part of this wonderful tradition. My thanks to both Butch and Russ. James, thank you for your commentary. Okay. So, Lisa, you, Lisa, for bringing I, Matt to us. Lisa, I saw your son yesterday in first serve. And that's the last time I had seen him since last, <laughs> last spring. And, and uh, the look on his face, the smile, the the fired up spirit about him. He's so looking forward to being back this year and I'm so excited to see him healthy. We talked about his wrist. I mean, when you have a player who wins a national championship and then all of a sudden he can't even play for you last spring, it, it kind of had an impact negatively on the team. But uh, we're excited to see Matt back and are wishing him the very best and hopefully he stays healthy. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> Is that and Liza Southwick? It is. Liza Southwick, okay. one of our uh, female alum. Uh, very appreciative of Coach Newman and all he did for our program. He was and still is an inspiration to my teammates and me. The SATs are something I learned to live by and was successful in life because of it. Liza. Now with I, Spurs Sports and Entertainment, I, a business analyst, too. So, Liza, I just want to say, hey, you were Coach's dream. And Fortunately, I was not. I was turning the reins over when you came over, and I just <laughs> wish I would have been the one to be able to coach you. But I was behind you, supporting you, as you well know, <laughs> yelling for you with your mom and dad when they were down here for the matches. So Absolutely. I appreciate everything you brought to the program, and especially your decision to attend Trinity. We have a, an anonymous contributor about. Uh, carrying on with Sloan, that he uh, he beat the UT number one player when they were a top 10 D1 oh, team. Oh, that's a great <laughs> up, story. Up in Austin. <laughs> great uh, story. Yeah, the year after we won the team event. Uh, you know, we were such a good Division three program that we we tried to get good competition here in Texas, but being that we were one of the only Division three teams, and then we had to go to scholarship programs. And we got some good uh, matches. We played A&M. Uh, we, and we played UT, but we never got the opportunity to play them again after <laughs> Sloan beat their number one player <laughs> up in Austin on their home courts. Yeah. I mean, we had some good tight matches, and, uh, but uh, they would use us, they thought, for cannon fodder, and we would give them, <laughs> you know, we'd give them great matches. But, uh, yeah, Sloan, uh, they <laughs> weren't expecting no. that big serve and big, big forehand. I think he had taken a week off before that match. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was uh, truly an incredible moment for sure. Um, looks yeah. like our, our last comment here, unless anybody else has uh, any more questions they'd like to throw in here. Um, but I would like to echo and share in Slutsky's sentiment that uh, thanks for all you have done, Coach. Great to see this history of tennis in a public forum. So we all are very appreciative of that. Um, oh, we're getting some tired, some man. amended. It says uh, it was th that was actually Jennifer Lambeth who uh, commented earlier, not Lisa Tyre. Oh, it's, uh, the name is uh, incorrect on the on the screen there. But oh. hi, hello, Miss Lambeth. Um, we're <laughs> excited to hear you watching as well. Um, we do have a late contributor here. Um, I was there from '86 to '90. Took intermediate tennis classes there a couple years, and hearing that you had to recruit from some of those classes was amazing. I just missed my chance. Just kidding, was nowhere near the best in the class, but still fondly <laughs> recall the lessons from those classes. Thank you for all the wonderful memories of the Trinity program. Andrew Appold, of class of 90. Oh, that's nice. Wow, Andrew, you probably remember a girl named Susie Klimmer. She was yeah. from uh, Arizona, Phoenix, and uh, wow. She ended up being, she was a lefty and a brilliant, like a state champion badminton player. Oh, man. 
So, you know, she had great hands, good overhead, you know, top spin forehand, but uh, not much experience playing tennis. But it, it's amazing how well she and another girl from Arizona, Sarah Fulner, developed their senior year. We're uh, in the semifinals of uh, <laughs> tournament at NCAA Team Championships in Sweetbrier, Virginia. We're playing UC San Diego, and we're in the doubles. Started out with doubles, all three doubles, and we have match, two match points at number two. We have a 7-1, 40-15 lead at number three, where Susie and Sarah were playing, and we're up a break at number one, and we lose all three of those. <laughs> but uh, I'll never... <laughs> But it was all fun. <laughs> I mean, you, we, we, uh, but Susie was a great one. You may ever remember her, Andrew. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, where is spring break this year? We are going to Florida this year, uh, back to Florida this year for uh, a good experience down there that we get to play at the, uh, the USGA National Tennis Center, which is an incredible complex. So it'll be a good experience for, for our players for sure. If I'm, if I may, aren't, isn't the men's team going to Newport, Rhode Island still? We, we, that's a International good, Tennis Hall of Fame, right? Absolutely, yes, thank you, James. Yeah, yeah. Um, very good, very we, good. Uh, we were extended the invite for the inaugural Hall of Fame event um, by Todd Martin. Got to speak with him on the phone um, up in Newport, Rhode Island. It's uh, the first year they've included Division Three at the tournament. It's had Division One following, but this is the, the inaugural season. It's going to be us, uh, CMS, Chicago, and Wash U. Wow. Um, we ha get to have four players represented. Um, representing Trinity on the grass courts, which will, I think, be a, a pretty new experience for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so they get to play uh, three singles matches and three doubles matches while they're up there. Uh, tremendous honor and opportunity to be part of the first time going through this event. Uh, great, yeah. And we're looking forward to that experience for sure. And that's this fall. I ought to go and announce it. What do you think, Butch? I'm sure they well, would. King, I, I can go. Can't well, I'll tell you what. I'm kind of jealous because <laughs> I played that tournament at the Hall of Fame six years. Had some really good times and good matches. And... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about going. No, I'm, if anybody goes extra, I, I'm going to preempt you on that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, city in Florida, we're going to be in the Orlando area uh, for spring break. Um, Dick Stockton continuing, ribbing you a little bit. Must have been bad coaching against UC San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> one of my un unfortunate days. Um, the Rhode Island tournament, what is it called again? It's the, uh, it's the Hall of Fame um, tournament up there, uh, just the collegiate tournament. Um, it is uh, Newport, Rhode Island, and it's uh, September 14th through the 16th. So this fall coming up pretty much right after we get back into session here. So we're, we're definitely excited for that. It should be a, a tremendous experience. You know, that's where the NOAD or the, the tiebreaker institute. There was a guy named Jimmy Van Allen, and every year at his tournament, the first couple of rounds, he would have some new innovation that he would mandate that you had to play on the oh, first wow. day of the tournament. And uh, one year, he moved uh, the baseline for the server back three feet, so the serve wouldn't be that big of a part of the game wow. to try to extend the rallies on the grass, because as right. you know, they're pretty short. But uh, he started the Jimmy Van Allen Simplified Scoring System, which has turned into the tiebreaker. And it's been one of the best innovations, I think, for tennis. And Wimbledon will probably more than likely have to implement it as well next year. After that Isner match again, and Isner Anderson. Yeah. Um, let's see, I think that's, that's really about it. James? You well, uh, let's give a shout out to our Colleagues in athletics, Mr. Bob King, Seth Asbury, Stacy Lenderman. That's right. We could, we couldn't do this without them, could we? No, they're, they're, they're all of them are marvelous, you know. So it's a, but it's this has been a lot of fun. I want to thank Salim from Alumni Relations as well. Absolutely. This is looking forward to the spring with Gretchen Rush and uh, you guys have been let marvelous. Me, <coughs> Go let ahead. Me, let me just thank everybody who's ever come through this program, because uh, you know had you not been here. <laughs> We coaches wouldn't even have anybody to coach. So I want to thank you for enduring us, giving me the opportunity, now giving Russ the opportunity to serve in a way that makes our life meaningful and purposeful. Sure. Uh, you know, nothing gives me a greater joy than to be able to do something for somebody else when, and 
when you're not looking for something in return. And, and uh, I know Coach Mabry did that for me. And uh, thank you all for coming here and allowing me to hopefully impart some things to you that are, are meaningful and lasting for you. So Absolutely. all Trinity tennis players and our Trinity alum who's listening, who have a heart for the program and the school and things you got out of here, we thank you for being a part of our Trinity family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I need to add one shout out to two of my close colleagues, Justin Parker and Bree Davis. I can't yes. believe I forgot them. Sports <laughs> information. So is that about it, you think? I, I think that's it. We well, it. And we still are accepting donations. We are. Yeah. We are. We are. We definitely. <laughs> definitely. As Dean Martin used to say, keep those cards and letters coming. Yeah, that's Put right. a little cash in it. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining this, joining this live webinar. I, I had a lot of fun. I really did. Our next webinar is scheduled for August 29th at noon central featuring Ben Gerwitz, a class, the class of 2002. He's a financial advisor who will talk about retirement planning basics. Now, Butch and I are not ready to retire yet, but we're still Believe me, but <laughs> August 29th at noon, Ben Gerwitz, financial advisor. So thank you all and go Tigers. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, we didn't.